Peace, family. This video right here, okay, is about the fact that I have successfully sued Brother Polite for over a quarter million dollars. Now, I'm going to be very, very, very humble in this video. Why? Because I believe in my own philosophy that I created called Humble Hand vs. Iron Fist. Pause. Okay, so when you go and look up this case, Marshall Daniels versus Michael Hoack, which is wrong, it's Noack, which is Brother Polite, it says that this case is still pending. Right there, status pending. So that's a lie right there. All right, let's hear what else he has to say, because I definitely bought this court docket too, so we'll just have to see all the rest of the lies, but right off the bat, it's a lie. So let's just see what else he says. The liar that he is, we, I mean, this is funny. What we're going to talk about in this video is not, um... You know, anything crazy is going to be a liberating conversation. I love and, um, the important logistics of of, of, of why and, and, and what, you know, my intentions were is what I'll be discussing. Okay? So, is Brother Polite rich? We about to find out. Do Brother Polite really got that bag? <laughs> we about to find out. Um, if anybody sees Brother Polite, I would like for you to tell him I need my bag. Um, what you call it? I'm not gonna say where I believe he is, okay? But y'all know where we last seen him, allegedly where his daughter came up missing. If you run into Brother Polite, call me on Instagram. Let me know so that I can tell Brother Polite I need my bag, okay? And so, um, I was awarded this amount. I'm no, not gonna be specific weren't. about the amount, but I was awarded this amount. Okay. Hold on. He didn't. He just said, "I'm not going to be specific about the amount." But in the beginning, he says, "I successfully sued him for a quarter million dollars." So, isn't that pretty specific? I mean, this dude is just like out of control. Uh, from a from a total cost of punitive damages, attorney fees, and everything else. Now, you might say, "Fair, why am I making this video?" I'm not why making this video you? for clout. Polite might be broke. I might not never get paid. Okay, so. If you think I'm banking and waking up every day and I think I got a, a free quarter million dollar car, it would be nice, but I'm not depending on that, okay? Because honestly, I don't. I think he's broke, okay? Because, I, like I said, I'm not going to give personal details, uh, you know, on this video for obvious reasons, but he don't got no mansion. He don't got none of that stuff he's talking about. All that stuff is rented. The boy was in a, 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 a two-bedroom apartment just like everybody else. He doesn't so he's know. not a, none of that. Do not let him cap. If you ask me how I know, I know, okay? No, I know. I got the man served personally at his address, okay? Not no. So with that being said, he, he's a cat god. So all of that's... All that at least this video shows us when we know he's lying. Like, his facial expressions, mannerisms. Like, this is basically a good educational video to know exactly when this liar is lying. And it's sad, too, because it's like... Wasn't he the one that's like, oh, integrity and reputation is everything? Yeah, right. This is just pathetic, actually. Flashy stuff. He talking about he got, he don't got. And if he really got it, then uh, give me my bread. It shouldn't be a problem. Now, I'm going to tell y'all what I, what, you know, not all, but some of the things I, I sued him for and why. No. And also, if you've been scammed by Polite, what you can do. What did I sue Polite for? My parole officer was called a lot of times, okay? I'm not going to give this specific number. She was called a lot of times. Not only by him, but people that he had called, okay? The number is over 10. It's even over 20, okay? False claims was made to my parole officer, such as uh, I showed basically inappropriate or nude pictures no, I never said of, his, anything like of that. his daughter at the time who was 10. Okay, I believe she's 13 now. Uh, at the time, his 10-year-old daughter, and I was basically trying to solicit her for prostitution. One, I never met him or his kids. Two, since I never met his daughter, it would be impossible for me to get an inappropriate picture of his daughter. And if I did get it, 
I would have had to gotten it from him, which means why would he himself have inappropriate pictures of his own daughter? So he lied on me. Uh, he tried to slander me basically like I was a pedophile. And he went, into, <laughs> he went to the extreme to even call my... Okay, let's just look at the court history. So that all started on August 10th of 2017. And it says nothing about any type of nude, anything. It just says defamation, which was never happened because he got his name wrong. So we couldn't even serve him. So again, just a whole bunch of lies and fraud and everything else we expected. Role officer and lie on me. Now, this also put me in jeopardization of, I mean, you know, jeopardization of going back to jail because police contact as well as any new charges is an automatic violation okay so boom we don't stop there he had a woman press charges on me him and a bunch of other people who admitted it i have the screenshots of them admitting it so they can't say they didn't admit it i got the one screenshot of the uh other dude who used to be a crackhead uh named um i got the screenshot of him <laughs> saying he's yes, even laughing he can and he doesn't care okay so that being said polite him and a bunch of other people i won't name right now had a woman press charges on me in Baltimore, I went to trial for a year, had to drive down to trial, drive down to Baltimore for a year. I couldn't do no lectures, do no events or none of that. So when some of y'all be like, Farrah White, when you come in here, when you, a lot of times you didn't see me moving because I was fighting cases that people was putting on me for fake. So I had a case in Baltimore that I fought for a year because a woman lied on me and said that I threatened to kill her and her kid and throw them off a bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, she also lied. One day I was driving to court all the way from Buffalo to Baltimore, driving to court, and she called the courthouse and said that I, that I was going to have a courthouse shot up, okay? And, this is um, just dramatic as hell. It was armed agents waiting for me. When I got there to go to court, they told me to wait outside. They didn't even let me check in. I waited outside for like an hour. My attorney finally gets there. He's like, why are you outside? I'm like, listen, the district attorney and all the, all of whoever them, because I knew they wasn't bailiffs. So I'm like, whoever them people in there with them guns, they told me to wait outside. So he's like, I'm going to go see what's going on. He go in there, he come back out, and he like, oh, what you call it? All them armed agents, you know why they're here, right? I'm like, hell no, why they I'm thinking somebody a big drug dealer or somebody in Baltimore and got arrested. This is just goes on and, and on and on. I can't even take it anymore. Okay, so just basically at the end of the day it says the default judgment will not be entered. The court will continue the matter to allow the plaintiff to file a valid declaration of due diligence from the process server detailing the attempts made to personally serve defendant before effect substituted service so like i said basically he didn't know his name so it was never served and he hasn't followed up because this case is still pending and if you need me to send you these documents or anything else let me know it's just you know one thing after another and i'm just trying to do my moral obligation of telling truth when i see it